Hello, this presentation is going to look at how to conduct a correlation analysis using IBM SPSS. And I have open here the GSS from the year 2021, which is the General Social Survey, which you may download from the National Opinion Research Center. And if you Google that, you should find it. And really, the GSS uh, is primarily made of categorical variables, which include your nominal and your ordinal. Um, in other words, when people reply to survey questions, the answers tend to be in categories, right? Like Likert scale style like this one, strongly agree, etc. And categorical variables are not really appropriate for a Pearson correlation. There is a ranked uh, Spearman correlation, but that's not what we are looking at here today. Um, so uh, a nice little shortcut. If you're looking for continuous or interval level data in the GSS, if you just go down the if you're in variable view and you look at the values column, whenever there's no explanation of the values, that usually means that it's a continuous variable. So you can see uh, the respondent's age when their first child was born, the uh, did they take a car trip in the past 12 months, how many times, uh, this one year of their birth, so kind of an indicator of age, and uh, so on. Okay, so family income and constant dollars. These are all um, good choices for us if we want to do a correlation analysis. And usually when we're doing a correlation, it's because we have some kind of cause and effect in mind. But remember, correlation does not equal causation. So we don't want to confuse the two. But correlation is one of the requirements to establish causation. But in a cross-sectional data set like this, we can't establish time order. And so there, there's really no way to definitively establish causation. Um, we can uh, control for other variables using a, what's called a multiple regression, uh, but that'll be in the next video. So here we're just looking at correlation. All right, and the steps are pretty easy. It's just analyze, come down to correlate, and bivariate. And I've actually pulled all the variables over that are continuous. And uh, so we have the age of the respondents. We have the socioeconomic index, uh, which basically rates everybody in terms of their socioeconomic status, the number of hours they've spent watching television, the number of hours they've spent surfing the web, the hours they've spent in the car in the last 12 months, uh, their combined family income. Uh, this is their spouse's uh, socioeconomic index. This is their occupational prestige score and their spouse's occupational prestige score. Their mother and father's prestige score. The number of rooms they have in the house. So sort of a indicator. People with big houses tend to have more money, for instance. We might look at that relationship. The number of times they've taken a plane trip in the last 12 months and the number of siblings they have. So out of all these variables, and they're something like 800 variables, <laughs> so quite a few, and only a handful of them are actually interval level variables. Now uh, they're continuous. So uh, you know, we just click OK anytime we want to do a correlation once we pull the variables over. Um, I usually display the variable names and sort them alphabetically so it's easy to find. Uh, why don't we take a look at uh, TV hours in relationship to all of these other variables. So I, what I like to do is put my dependent variable first, especially when I'm going to be examining a lot of different variables in a correlation table. And that way I can just go down the first column. All right, so if I click OK, uh, the results will come up. And here's what we see. Uh, correlation table. This one's big because I had a lot of variables in there. I just threw them all in. It's a kitchen sink approach. And there's the hours per day watching television. And we can see age of respondents. So we see it's a small positive correlation of 0.192. It is statistically significant. Uh, that means the relationship probably also exists in the population, uh, not just the sample. And it's a what we call maybe a weak to moderate correlation. The older people are, the more TV they watch, is what that's telling us. Uh, 
some reason there's a small relationship between you know, how many car trips people have taken and, and how much TV they watch. I guess they're watching TV in the car, maybe. Um, family income has a negative relationship, although it is also fairly weak. So the more money families make, the less time they spend watching television. Um, uh, the more prestige, more occupational prestige uh, your mother has, the less TV you'll watch. I'm not sure why that is, but it might have something to do with the way you're, you're brought up and socialized. Uh, it's also true of the father, but slightly weaker relationship. Same with prestige score. Uh, your, your occupational prestige, the higher it is, the less TV you'll watch. And uh, same with your socioeconomic index. So people with more prestigious jobs and higher levels of socioeconomic status tend to watch slightly less television. Um, and there's a slight trade-off with hours per week surfing the web. That's what this one is, www hours per week. But it is almost zero. It is statistically significant, though, so it, it's extremely weak, but uh, significant. Uh, the more siblings you have, the more television you watch, which is also fairly weak, but st statistically significant relationship. So anyways, that's just a quick look at what we can do with a correlation analysis and uh, how we interpret some of the findings. So we're looking at the correlation, the strength of it, the direction, is it positive or negative, and is it statistically significant, and at what level. Right, so we see the significance two-tailed. So you know, it's 0 0.001 means we're 99.9% .9 confident that it exists in the population. Some of these are a little smaller in terms of the significance. Uh, let's see if we could find one right there, the last one. 0 0.038, we're only about 96% confident that this exists in the population. But in either case, you know, 95% is usually the cutoff, so anything smaller than 0 0.05 is significant, and that's usually the standard we use um, for making inferences. Uh, if it's not significant, like uh, this one, spouse's occupational prestige score has a negative 0 0.039 correlation, but significance is 0 0.174, so that is not below 0 0.05. So that means there is a correlation in the sample, a weak one, but it doesn't exist in the population. Right, we're not very, we're not very confident that it exists in the population. All right. Thanks for watching.